lady, this is Miss Jero. So now I we will going to learn about chapter one, which are the what is economics and the price theory and economic theory. Okay, so the contents of these chapters are number one, economic activity, consumption, economic theory, an overview of the economy. Types of economic system, characteristics of microeconomics, the model or economic models, the types of economic system. And these are the objectives. Number one, basic economic terms. Number two, identify the elements involved in the objective of satisfying wants. Number three, differentiate economic analysis and economic policy. And describe the methodology used in the scientific approach in studying economics. Itemize the characteristics of microeconomics, apply the use of economic models, and economic analysis. Present an overview of a circular flow in the economy. And the last, which is the uh, differentiate the type of the types of economic system. Okay, so what is economics? So economics is deals with economizing. Huh? So economizing we do budgeting. Okay? So, in budgeting, no, automatically, bakit tayo nagbabudget? Because we have limitations. So, dahil may limitation tayo, ano nangyayari? Nagkakaroon ng scarcity. Scarcity, which is the central of economic theory. The word economics was derived from the Greek words ikos, or a house. And uh, the mind is, ko, uh, the mean is to manage. So, meaning to say, uh, Economics uh, relies, or let's say, economics start in the household. Okay? So, si household, meron siyang budget. Sumawad si nanay, sumawad si tatay, sumawad si ate, si kuya, or kung sino mong sumasawad sa bahay ninyo. Na, kung saan, yung budget na yun, or yung sahod na yun, no, minamanage natin. Okay, like for example, yung senas katapusan, o yung konsenas itong sahod ko na to, kailangan magtagal to hanggang katapusan, hanggang sa sumahod ako ulit. So, yung, yung pagkakakasyahin mo, yung pagkakasyahin ninyo sa bahay, yung sahod na yun, that is what we call manage. Okay? So, bakit po tayo nagkakaroon ng, ng, ng managing our resources or our money? Because we have the so-called economic activity. So, ano po yung economic activity na yun? This is our consumption. Yung pagbili natin sa araw-araw, yung pagkonsumo natin, ng ating mga basic needs that is automatically economic activity. Okay? Bakit siya tinawag na economic activity? Because we pay for a certain products, we pay for a certain goods na kung saan paulit-ulit natin siyang pinibili. Okay? So the best example there is our basic commodities. So now, um for us to address this problem, we have some questions, no? Number one, what are the goods and services are to be produced? Okay? Um, let's go with the household muna. So, sa bahay, gawin natin example muna sa bahay. Lahat itong mga problems na to or itong mga questions na ito. Okay, sa bahay, um, ano ba yung, yung lagi or let's say, ano ba yung paborito sa bahay? Or let's say, ano ba yung kasa ng budget na okay, natin? para maitawid ang buong maghapon. Ano yung pwede nating mabili? Okay, ano ba yung dapat na pwede nating ihain sa hapagkainan? So, yun yung ating goods and services. Ngayon, paano natin siya ipoproduce? Paano natin ito maibibigay? Or paano natin ito uh, paano natin ito mapoprovide sa ating family? Okay? How can we produce this? For whom? Obviously, this is our families or yung nasa bahay natin. Or next is the resource efficiently used. Ito po pang mga uh, goods na binili natin. Okay? Mapapakinabangan po ba ito ng lahat? Okay? Example, bumili ka ng, ano, ng, ng meal. No, yung meal mo na yon hindi pala siya kakainin ng lahat. Okay? So in that sense, hindi po siya naging efficient. Why? Maybe may nasayang ka. No? What else? Are the resources fully employed? Sabihin, lahat po ba ng mga ingredients na nabili mo sa bahay o yung nabili mo para sa bahay, nagamit po ba siya lahat or marami kang natira? 
And next, the last is how to attain growth in the economy. So, when it comes to larger perspective, uh, pata tayo ng business. Sa business, ang alamin niya, ano po ba yung goods and services na kailangan niyang i-produce? But, before they going to produce those goods and services, kailangan nilang malaman kung ano po ba yung consumable na pwedeng mabenta sa market. Okay? So, dito iikot yung for whom these goods and services are to be produced. For whom, meaning to say, businesses need to identify who are they target market. Okay? So, by having or for, to identify the whom, okay, doon nila maiisip ngayon kung ano ba yung needs and wants ng kanilang target market. So, doon papasok yung what. So, after ng what, okay, nalaman na nila na ito yung needs ng target market nila. In this case, papasok na yung tinatawag na paano ko siya ngayon ipoproduce. Alright? Ano pa? Are the resources efficiently used? Ibig sabihin lang yan, yung raw materials po ba na ginagamit natin? Okay? Ay efficient. Ibig sabihin, uh, may good quality ba ito? Okay? If you are referring with food, yung mga ingredients po ba natin, eh, pumapasa sa panlasa ng ating mga consumers. Okay, next is number five. Are the resources fully employed? Ibig sabihin po, yung raw materials po ba na yun, hindi lang siya ginamit for a certain product. Kung baga, yung raw materials na yun, it can be applicable with all the uh, with all the goods that you are producing. Yan. And the last is how to attain growth in the economy. Pag sinabing growth, automatically, it deals with managing. No? How how can we prosper? Okay? How can, kumbaga sa business, paano, paano siya kikita? Ayan. So, para kumita siya, kailangan itong mga question na nasa taas. Okay? Kailangan niya itong pag-aralan. Kailangan niyang ibigay yung best effort niya. Okay? Para in the, para in the future, no, it can be a win situation for them. Alright. So, next we have the circular flow in the economy. So, in our flow, Okay, ito madalas naririnig niyo ito or madalas na pag-aaralan niyo ito with your other economic subject. So we have the circular flow diagram. Dalawa lang naman 'yan. It deals with the circulation of money and the circulation of goods and services. So pag sinabi nating goods and services, obviously pinu-provide ni firm. Okay, any businesses. Ngayon, para i-provide ni firm 'yan, dapat syempre magbayad tayo. Okay, we need to pay for a certain goods and services that are provided by firm. Okay, kayo na pinaprovide kay household. Now, para may pambili si household ng kanyang pangangailangan, anong gagawin niya? Most of us, what? We do our hard work. Di ba? Nagtatrabaho tayo. O kaya, some of naging negosyo, that's also work. Okay? So, ano nangyayari? Kapag kasi household, nagtrabaho sa firm, ano makakuha niya? Obviously, the wages and salary. Para ano? May panggasto siya. So, as you can see, paikot-ikot lang siya. Okay? That is what we call circular flow and in the economy. Bilitin natin. Ano po yung umihikot sa circular flow? Money, goods, and services. Yung po yung dalawa na yun. Sa, kanino po sila umiikot? Kay household and kay firm. Okay, next, we have the two branches in economics. Okay, so yung economics po are divided into two categories, which is the micro and macro. Let, uh, let's talk about the micro first. So yung micro po, it deals with the individual agents, such as household, yan sa bahay, businesses. Um, however, no, yung ma macroeconomics naman, it's considered the uh, economy as a whole. In which case, it uh, consider aggregate supply and demand for money, capital, and also the commodity. So, aspect receiving particular attention in the economics are also resource allocations, production, distribution, trade, and competition. So, in economics may in principle be applied to any problems that involve choice and their scarcity pa din or determining or determ uh, or to determine the economic value. Okay. Sino po ba or kanin, paano po ba nag-start 
yung micro and macro. So, this is coined by Frob Ragnar, priest of Oslo University during 1920s. So, pag sinabi daw pong micro, means millions part. Okay? Ibig sabihin, sa doon sa, sa isang buo, may iba't iba siyang parte. Okay? So, in Greek, micros means small. Okay? Thus, microeconomics deals with the small part of the entire or the whole economy. So, like for example, if we are uh, studying the price of a particular commodity instead of studying the general price level in the economy. So, we actually are uh, studying microeconomics. Okay? So, precisely, no, microeconomics studies the behavior of individuals, units of economics such as, again, consumers, firms, and industry, etc. So, therefore, it is the study of particular units rather than all units combined together. So, microeconomics is also called price theory. Okay? So, in which the explain the composition or allocation of the total production if we are repairing with business. Alright? So, in short, natin na, in short, si microeconomics, it deals with the behavior of individual consumers, firms, and industry, and also the distribution of production and income among them. So, it also consider individuals both as suppliers of labors and capital as the ultimate consumers of the final product. On the other hand, it analyzes firms both as suppliers of products as a consumers of labors and capital. So, ngayon, saan po ba umiikot yung tinatawag natin na microeconomics? So, let's talk about the characteristics. Okay. So, in the characteristics of microeconomics, these are divided into three. Okay? So, ano po yung tatlo na yan? So, the pricing, or sorry, the, the theory of price, uh, product pricing and also the factors of pricing. And the last is economic welfare. So, let's talk about, uh, let's, uh, let, let's discuss one by one. Okay. So, in theory of product pricing, which includes the theory of consumer behavior and the production and cost. So, paano po ba tayo nagbibigay ng price sa product natin? Example, nagtinda ka. Paano mo siya ngayon pipresyoan? So, sabi dito, um, pag presyoan mo daw yung product mo, tignan mo muna, ano po ba yung behavior ni consumer towards your products? Okay? Example, ang behavior ni consumer ay, I, they are price sensitives. So what 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 will you do? No, iisip pa ngayon ng pricing strategy. No, kung baga uh, yung pricing strategy mo na yon, it will attract your consumers when it comes to buying behavior. Next, theory of production and cost. Sure, kapag ikaw ay nagbe business para hindi ka malugi, ano gagawin mo? Sure, ko kompyuti mo lahat ng iyong expenses at saka ngayon magbibigay ng markup. So, pag yung expenses mo plus your markup, that is your product price. Next, theory of factor pricing. So, kailan po nagbabago ang presyo? No? So, we have four. Number one, the wages. How wages change or how, how our wages can be increased. So, dito pa pasok ang tinatawag natin na mga minimum wages, di ba? So, yung minimum wages po natin, nakadepende po yan sa standard of living sa bansa natin. So, kapag ka tumaas yung mga presyo ng mga basic commodities natin, automatically, anong gagawin ni government? mag intervene siya. Okay, so, pag nag-intervene siya, magbibigay siya ng batas. O, ito na yung ating ano, minimum wage siya. So, ayan. Next, theory of rent. Kailan po nagbabago ang renta? So, depende po kung anong klaseng establishment yan, saan nakatayo yan. If we are referring with the land, gaano kalaki yung square meters nyan. So, yun. Even, di ba, kapag ka kayo, if you are renting in computer shop, di ba? So, yung, yung rent ninyo, nakadepende kung gaano katagal. So, the more na tumatagal kayo sa shop, the more na nadadagan yung, yung, yung binabayad ninyo. Next, ano pa, yung factor pricing about, ulitin natin ulit, ha, uh, rent sa computer shop. So, kailan po tumataas si, si computer shop? Siyempre, kapag po, nag ano siya nag upgrade siya ng internet connection okay that's one of the factor 
Next is uh, theory of interest. Ang interest po, it deals with utang. Di ba? Sangdaan, sinangla mo yung ano mo, yung yung alahas mo or sinangla mo yung cellphone mo. So, may interest yun. Hindi, hindi yun, hindi mo babayaran yun doon sa kanyang uh, actual price. Kung magkano mo siya sinangla. Instead, syempre, kailangan mo rin siyang tubuan and that is interest tubo. Okay? Same thing sa mga nagpapautang. Di ba? Sa banko, may mga certain percentage sila. Ayan, yung mga nagka-credit card, yung mga percent yan. There's no such thing as zero interest. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi syempre, nagpautang ka eh. Pinahira mo yung pera mo eh. Alam, hindi yung tumubo. Okay? Next is the theory of profit. So, kailan po ba uh, kumikita si business? Okay? So, true. Kasi minsan, no, um, yung kapag ka kumikita, example, nag ano si, ano, si, si business, chinect niya. Okay, nagkaroon, nagkaroon siya ng inventory. Ay, ang laki pala ng ang laki pala ng tinubo ko dito sa dito sa product na 'to. Anong gagawin niya? mag adjust siya ngayon ng price. Or in other way around, baliktad. Okay, nag nagkaroon siya ng fixed price. Or sabi natin, meron siyang initial price. Tapos in the long run or habang tumatagal, ay lumalaki yung aking cost. So what will happen? No, oh, hindi na siya kumikita. So kapag ka hindi na siya kumikita, ano mangyayari sa presyo? Diba? Babaguhin niya. Tataasan niya. Para nga naman, meron siyang profit. Okay? And for the last of the year of economic welfare. So, dito naman, it deals with the goods for everybody. Diba? Ano ba yung makakabuti sa society? Ano ba yung makakabuti sa community? So, yan. Ano ba yung makakabuti? Like, for example, diba ngayon, we are facing the coronavirus, which is leads to pandemic. So, ano ba yung makakabuti sa lahat? Diba? Wala ng trabaho lahat. Halos lahat wala ng trabaho. Halos lahat uh, surviving in our surviving stages. So, ano yung gagawin ng government para naman kahit pa paano maibsan yung stress no, na nalaramdaman ng kanyang nasasakupan. So, yan po yung ating characteristics of microeconomics. Okay, next. Let's talk about the economic model. No, yung kaninang circular flow isa siyang example. Okay? So dito, no, economic model based on our definition, this is a hypothetical construct that embodies economic procedures using a set of variables in logical and or quantitative correlations. Ayun, medyo nagre-reminisce pa kayo sa inyong research. Okay, next is the it is a uh, simplistic method using mathematical and other techniques created to show complicated processes. And for the last, an economic model can have many constraints which may change to generate different properties. Saan po ba ginagamit yung model? Okay? Ang model po o yung mga theories na ginagamit natin, it's simply what? Uh, ito po yung nagiging medium or ito po yung nagiging way for us to solve a specific problem. Okay? So, bakit po? Kasi, kapag po may problem, may solution. Okay? Whatever the solution is that, we use different kinds of model. Alright, so these are uh, the things that we're going to discuss. Okay? We have the descriptive. Okay? One of the theory, one of the model also. The economic principles. Ayan. Economic theories, models, theoretical econo uh, econ economics, and also the policy or applied economics. Okay, so first, let's talk about this method or economic mod uh, economic model. Okay, ito economic model model na to. Uh, this is differentiated into two. Okay, so ano daw po ba yung pinagkaiba ng inductive or empirical method? Doon po sa ating deductive or hypothetical method. Alright, so what are the difference between inductive and deductive? So, inductive it deals with empirical method. No? So, yung empirical na ito, okay, it starts with the facts or a specific observation based, which are based on empirical data and ends with theories, generalized explanations, or constructions about observed regular, uh, regularities. Pag sinabi naman po natin deductive, okay, it starts from generalization. 
usually a hypothesis and ends with the facts to support or refute the general statement. The deductive method uh, has developed or has been used to develop many economic model. So, ngayon, ano po ba yung, ano, uh, para mas maunawaan natin yung inductive or empirical method. Um, this is also known as historical method. So, dito sa method na to, meron tayong tinatawag na concrete method. Pag sinabing concrete, buo siya. No? Pag sinabing buo, binang to say, totoo, may fact siya. Ibig sabihin, solid. No? So, these are uh, anal analytical method and realistic method. So, this method starts investigation. Why? Because the this method is de definitely based on the uh, facts nga, no? and historical events and tries to generalize them with references to the whole economy. However, pag sinabi naman po nating um, deductive, okay, ang pinagkaiba niyan, deductive methods is also known as abstract, analytical, hypothetical, or prior methods. So, this method accepts certain universal truth or tries to, de to deduce inferences about the particular event through a process of logical reasoning. In other words, deductive method goes from general to a particular. Sabihin, habang tumatagal, uh, yung, yung entire analysis natin, okay, nagiging, ano na lang siya, nagiging more specific. Alright? So, yun po yung pinagkaiba. Kung baga, pwede natin na, pag sinabing inductive from small to large, pag sinabing deductive from large to small. Okay, so what is economic analysis and economic policy? So, in our economic analysis based off tools, ano ba yung mga ginagamit nating um, techniques, no? ano ba yung mga ginagamit nating uh, pamamaraan, okay, for us to analyze certain economic situations. So, it derives principle from facts which are systematically arranged and interpreted. And the last, the task of economic theories is to systematically arrange, interpret, and generalize a fan facts. However, when we talk about economic policy, it devise or to devise government action and to design institutions that might improve economic performance and achieve uh, economic goals of the society is not simple and easy matter. Kung baga ganito lang yan. In economic analysis, we analyze that nowadays, people are suffering. Okay? So, anong gagawin ni government? Okay? So, Dahil nagsasuffer ang kanyang society, mag-iislip siya ng iba't ibang pamamaraan para matulungan niya ito. Paano niya ito matutulungan? By providing different kinds of law. Diba ngayon meron tayong act as one? So that that law can definitely help everyone because we have or we are currently facing this pandemic. So yun lang, yun lang po yun. Economic analysis and economic policy. Alright, so now let's talk about... Uh, how to create or the steps of making economic theories. Okay, number one, obviously, no, alamin natin, what is the problem? No? In the first step is to formulate our theory. Is the selection of the problem, which must be stated clearly and correctly. So the problem to be explored may be very wide, like poverty, unemployment, inflation, etc. Or it may be narrow relating to an industry. So, the, now, the narrower the problem, ibig sabihin, the more na mas uh, pinaliliit natin yung problem or we, we get the, the root of the problem, the better. Uh, next. Okay. In formulation, our hypothesis about the economic phenomena to be analyzed. So, a hypothesis is a suggested answer. To problems may be the aid of which we endeavor to explain facts by discovering their orderliness. The hypothesis arises from the observed facts, obviously, no experience or previous knowledge of the researcher. So in this stage, simplifying assumptions may be introduced so that a particular hypothesis may be developed fully. Uh, it is this special assumption which become formulated 
consciously as hypothesis. So, like for example, no, uh, the assumption that producers aim to maximizing their profit. So, is a blue. This is this kind of hypothesis definitely can be real, no? Which the theory of business behavior can be constructed. Okay, ulit natin na. Um, you find the problem now. Sinabing hypothesis, ano ba yung suggested guess mo? You need to have suggested guess. Okay? Para ano? Okay, para ma-predict mo kung paano ba ang pwedeng maging solusyon doon sa iyong problem. Okay. In our prediction, no, malalaman mo, ah, okay. Example, sa selecting of the problem sa business, no? Uh, the, the business problem is about how to maximize their profit. Okay? So, ano yung magiging hypothesis natin doon? Or ano yung magiging suggested guess natin doon? Okay? So, ano gagawin? We're going to formulate what? Different business strategy. Next, prediction. In our prediction, using this strategy, what will happen with the output? Okay? Ito po bang mga ginawa nating suggested case ay magkakaroon po ba ng materialize? Okay, magkakaroon po ba siya ng I mean magma-materialize po ba ito? So predict natin, no? Kailan ba tayo kikita by using this kind of business strategies? Next testing of prediction. So na predict mo na, okay, in the long run, dahil gumagamit ako ng mga strategies Okay, by 10 years or 5 years from now, di ba? Ito yung kikitain ko. So, why not test it? Why not do it? Di ba? Gitin natin, may problem. Problem is about profitability of business. So, dahil may problem si business, kung paano siya kikita, iisip siya ngayon ng iba't ibang strategy. Co-formulate siya ngayon ng kanyang hypothesis. Ah, suggested case ko para dito, dapat magkaroon tayo ng different uh, marketing mix, mga ganyan. So, doon sa marketing strategy na yon ipipredict natin, oy, kailan ba ito pwedeng magmaterialize or gaano pa ito katagal para makuha natin yung tinatawag natin na return of investment. And then, you're going to test that. Kasi, guys, pag hindi nyo tinest yung inyong hypothesis, itong mga steps na ito, mababali nila. Alright? Next. Steps for making economic policy. Yeah, number one, syempre, the statement of our goal must be clear. Okay? This should be definitely economic goals, no? To be achieved. Number two, effects of alternative policy. So, dito, no? This second step is to examine and consider the possible effects of alternative policies designed to achieve the economic goal. Like for example, while considering the merit and demerit of fiscal policy in the achieving or the or the achievement of desired level employment, the altering monetary policy must remain under examinations. Okay. Next, we have the evaluation. So the third steps is to evaluate the effectiveness of the policy. The process of evaluation should be continuous if any drawbacks is found it is definitely easy for us to to back no to backtrack so that whatever the weak point that we have we can improve all right so while we are discussing the scope of economics we also think of whether Economics is positive or normative science. So, in this or in here, the positive science describe what is. Okay? This one. What is and the normative science explain what ought to be. So, does positive science describe a situation as it is? So, whether normative science analyzes the situation and suggests comments on wrongness or rightness of things or state. For example, the population of um, here in the Philippines is rising. Okay? The positive statement is a positive statement. And the rising population is an obstacle 
in the way of development. So, that is norma, normative statement. Palitin natin na, example sa Philippines, nagiging positive ito. Bakit? Kasi dumadami tayo. So, the, the more na dumadami tayo, the more na lumalakas yung ating paggawa. Okay? However, if we deal with the normative uh, norma, uh, normative science or normative uh, economics, okay, mapapaisip tayo, ay, the more na dumadami tayo, the more na nagkukulang yung ating mga resources. Okay. Next is, we have economic system. Ano-ano po ba yung ating economic system? So, before we discuss the four economic system, no? Uh, these economic systems have a uh, unique, unique, distinguish about their characteristics. Although they are all share some basic features like each economy function based on the uh, condition and also the assumption. So, these uh, economic systems are uh, categorized into four na. So, ano po, ano po yung apat na ito? So, we have traditional system, the command system, the market system, and the mixed system. Now, let's deal or let's talk about the traditional economic system. So, this system is based on goods, services, and work, all of which uh, follow certain established trends. It releases or it relies a lot on the people. And there is a very little division of labor or specialization. In essence, the traditional economy is very basic and the most ancient of the four types. Some parts of the world still function with the traditional economic system. It is commonly found in rural setting in a second or even in a third uh, nation or third world nation. Where economic activities are uh, predominantly farming or other traditional income generating activities, there are usually very few resources to share in their communities with traditional economic system. Either few resources occur natural, naturally in the region or access to them is restricted in some ways. So thus, traditional system, unlike the other three lacks the potential to generate a surplus. Nevertheless, precisely because of its uh, primitive nature, the, the, the traditional economic system is highly sustainable. In addition, due to its small output, there is a very little waste, wastage compared to other three systems. Okay? Ulitin natin. Yung traditional po, ito po yung uh, Kumbaga, para mabuhay sa isang tahanan, kailangan niyang magtrabaho. Okay? So, paano siya magtatrabaho? Um, before kasi, napaka, napakasagana. Even now, no? napakasagana natin sa natural resources. So, kung nagugutom ka, anong gagawin mo? Tanim ka ng gulay, tanim ka ng, ng palay para maging bigas. So, doon na umiikot yung traditional system. It's very tradition. No? For you to survive, you need to have, you need to, you need to um, commit yourself into farming. Para kapag ka nagutom ka, pipitas ka lang. So, that is very traditional system. Next, uh, we have the command economic system. Yan. So, pag sinabing command, obviously, it deals with, uh, parang ano yan, uh, lahat ng power na kay government. Okay? Si, si command system is also known as socialism or so, the simple term, no? Communist. Yan, mga communist ang bansa. So, their decisions are definitely based from the government. If an economy enjoy access to many resources, so dahil na si government lahat, so lahat, pantay-pantay, no? Walang mayaman, walang mahirap. Yan. So, chances that it may learn towards the command economic structure. In such case, no, the government comes in and exercises control over the resources. Ideally, centralized control covers valuable resources such as gold or even the oil. The people regulate, uh, regulate other less important sectors of the economy such as agriculture. So, ano ba yung mga, mga communists na natin bansa? No? So, we have ano ba, North Korea. No? So, sila talaga yung hanggang ngayon, command system sila. 
lahat ng anilang activities or economic activities sa ang nagpapatakbo ay government. Okay? Now, we have the market system o yung bansang kapitalista. So, huwag na tayong lumayo. Okay, welcome in the Philippines. So, Philippines are very uh, market system. Why? Because everyone can invest. No? Kung gusto mong kumita, magtinda ka lang online. The government will not uh, fully control you. So, that is market system. Next, we have uh, mixed si system. So, si mixed system is just a combination of command and market system. Ibig sabihin, win win situation. No? Pag sinabi, like for example, sabi dyan sa bansa na yan, um, oh, sabi ng government, magtataas ako ng taxes. Ayan. Nataks, magtataas ako ng income tax or corporate tax. Ang sabi ng, mark, ng mga, ano, ng mga businesses, okay, sige. No problem. But, but, okay, pero ito yung magiging presyo namin. No? Kung baga, ito dapat yung maging retail price. Kung baga, ito dapat yung maging suggested price from the government. So, yun, yun yung tinatawag natin na mix system. It's a win-win situation between the government and the businesses. Alright, so that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any question, please ask.